with more on these incredibly dangerous developments, we're going to go to Stuart Rhodes. He's a constitutional uh, lawyer uh, who uh, won awards at Yale for his reports and papers on the belligerent act and the whole enemy combatant uh, question. In fact, the paper was uh, titled Solving the Puzzle of Enemy Combatant Status back in 2004. Uh, he also, of course, worked in Congress for Ron Paul, and he's the founder of Oath Keepers. He's an Army paratrooper veteran uh, himself. And again, I saw mainstream articles last night and this morning saying that the bill passed, the amendment passed, and, and I rarely get caught up in something, but, but then later I learned it didn't pass. It was just that it's passed out of committee and that they're trying to bring cloture uh, so there can't be a debate on it or a filibuster. We're going to get Stuart to talk about that. And the amendment failed. The amendment failed, but uh, this is just incredible. And if it goes through the Senate, then I guess it'll go on to the president who claims he's going to veto it. But the president's already declared the power to kill American citizens, as they've already done with the Lockheed in that staged event to set the precedent. Uh, they've already said they can secretly arrest people uh, and detain them. He said last year, I don't need this legislation. I'll do it through the executive. So it's a lot of a lot of politicking to, to manipulate the public. As one congressman, Amash, said, this is carefully crafted to mislead the public. A week ago, they would say, oh, this doesn't affect citizens, because one provision says that. But then the other provision says, but it does if we say so, basically. Now, an expert, I mean, you couldn't think of a better one, military guy, uh, constitutional law scholar, you know, won awards for his research on this, um, worked for Ron Paul, knows Congress, knows all the Byzantine uh, things that are going on. Stuart Rhodes can break this down for us. Uh, but there's the latest article, indefinite detention bill set for final vote Thursday. Senate moves to limit debate on unconstitutional legislation. Uh, that's up on uh, Infowars.com, the latest uh, there. But again, last night I heard it passed, got up this morning, read articles, said it passed. That's the mainstream media. I've got to learn to just believe nothing they say. It, it's so incredible. I remember four years ago when NATO attacked the Russian-held area of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. For two hours, I was reporting, well, the Russians attacked it. Can't believe they did, because CNN was saying it. Turned out it was NATO attacked. I mean, I mean it, it's just that even I get caught up in their lies. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, Stuart Rhodes, great to have you here with us, my friend. Thank you, Alex, very much. Okay, so, so, so you wrote the papers on this. You've been an expert on this. You pointed out before we went live here, the, the Belligerent Act is, is, is really McCain's you know, real holy grail, where if you're just belligerent, you disappear into a black hole. So now they're trying to get it piecemeal. Break this down. Well, yeah, in the 2010 Belligerent, Act, Belligerent Detention Act, he, uh, he wanted the language to read that if you you know, commit an act of belligerence and warfare or any other act of terrorism against the United States, then you could be, if you're just accused of that by someone in the executive branch, you'd be whisked away into military detention, no grand jury indictment, no trial in front of a jury of your peers, just taken off to Guantanamo. He didn't quite get what he wanted, but what he's doing here is getting what he can. He's attaching this, making this part of the defense appropriations bill, which no one wants to vote against, or they're just, you know, described as being against the troops, and he talked to a, a, a Democrat, left into proposing it, but really it's, it's McCain's baby, and this is getting him getting what he can. What, he, what, he, what he's going to get out of this bill, if it passes, is uh, Section 1031, the first part of it, is does apply to U.S. citizens, because it says that any person, a covered person under this action, this section is any person who is accused of participating in 9-11 or aiding those who did it, or is accused uh, of being part of al-Qaeda or an allied group or supporting one of those organizations. And mere, the mere accusation alone by the, by the executive branch or someone in the Department of Defense would place you under military jurisdiction and, and, and then give the, the president the option of detaining you indefinitely, sending you off to Guantanamo. Um, it, it expressly states that a person who is under that first section can be one, detained in the laws of war without trial until the end of the hostilities authorized by the authorization for use of military force. And the wars never end. We're always under right. an endless emergency. And those, before you continue, that say, oh, well, let us get tough. Why even have America then? Because America is about due process and is about checks and balances. So you can't stage things. So people get a day in court. I mean, you know, this idea that, that, that due process is bad, all these people that say that, well, they should just move to another country. If they don't like due process, they should move to North Korea.
Yeah, if you don't want to live under the Bill of Rights then, and Article 3 of the Treason Clause, which is what this directly violates, then please do move, move to North Korea or China. Um, so it states you can be detained indefinitely for the duration of the war on terror, which is could be forever, or number two, a trial under Chapter 47A of Title 10 U.S. Code, which is the UCMJ, as amended by the Military Commissions Act. And what that means is military com military tribunal, military commission. And it also has a section, Section 1036. Some people say, well, you know, you get a, you get a, a right to challenge your determination. Well, it mandates in Section 1036 that. If you challenge your determination, it will be a military judge that shall preside at proceedings for the determination of status of an unprivileged enemy belligerent. And it also states that you will get, if you want one, a military lawyer, not a civilian lawyer, only a military lawyer. So the point is, is that is they're treating you, the American people, precisely the same as if you were an Iraqi or someone in Afghanistan in an occupied country. They're going to come into your house once they decided that you're a bad guy, they will, or just, just that they didn't want to call you a bad guy, say they don't like Alex Jones's speech. And so they designate him an enemy combatant and accuse him of aiding al-Qaeda in some way. That before you get a trial, before anything else happens, they come to your door, middle of the night, kick your door in, guys in, in black body armor come in, put a machine gun to your face and your children and whisk you away to Guantanamo. Well, wait, 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 Stuart, it's worse than that, though, because we already have the MIAC and Homeland Security reports. We got a new one yesterday where the feds are telling all local police that state rep Charles Key in Oklahoma, a great guy, and the victims' families of Oklahoma City who are investigating uh, what happened there, they are listed as domestic terrorists. Actually, it says domestic terrorism section. It lists them and even mainline libertarian websites. We've already seen Ron Paul having American right. flags. So the point is, they're already teaching the police and military this. They're already saying the returning veteran's the number one enemy. You know, they sell it on its Al-Qaeda. Oh, I know. Of course. But the point is, is like I said, he couldn't get what he really wants. He wants that wide open definition that includes or other ter acts of terrorism. But what he can get and what he's getting so far, the Udall Amendment yesterday to strike this provision w was defeated. What he's getting so far is a definition that's supposedly narrow that, that only applies to Al-Qaeda or those affiliated. And the same Al-Qaeda they've put in control of... of, of um Areas like North Africa and Libya are moving over to Syria. I mean, this all rings hollow when it turns out the globalists are running Al-Qaeda. What they're going to do, Alex, is what they'll do is they'll pass this bill like it, like it reads now, and then later on, say the next appropriations bill for the Defense Department next year, they'll insert a very vanilla amendment that says, insert at the end of this section, or other acts of terrorism. And there you go. It'll be a wide open um, sweeping in of anybody accused of any act of terrorism. But even right now, all they have to do is, this is the point, you won't get a jury trial, you won't get a grand jury indictment, they can just accuse you of aiding Al-Qaeda through some means, for some nefarious means, and then whisk you away to Guantanamo, and when you want to challenge it, it'll be a military judge, handpicked by Obama, who will determine whether or not you are justified in being held. It won't be a jury. You're, but you're what done. about you're the sections the dealing with using the military domestically? We know for decades they've been trying to do this, and we see Marines running checkpoints in California and Alabama and Army checkpoints in Tennessee, TSA now at checkpoints around the country. I mean, they're already doing this, and they're already killing U.S. citizens uh, abroad. Well, that's the other part of it. Well, that's the other part of it is that the backdrop to this is that the Supreme Court in 2004 in the Hamdi decision gutted the Bill of Rights. They, it's, it's, this, it's a horrible decision. I don't know why liberals keep saying it's some kind of victory for the Bill of Rights. It was nothing of the sort. I mean, even Judge Napolitano got it wrong last night in his, in his interview with Rand Paul. You know, God bless him, but he missed it on this one. In the Hamdi case, the O'Connor, Justice O'Connor, for the majority, made some flowery speech about how the power of the executive branch is not limited, but she went ahead and also said there's nothing in the Constitution that prevents the U.S. government from attaining one of its own citizens as an unlawful combatant. And then she said, but they have a right to challenge their determination, and they have the right to counsel. And in that decision, the, the only thing the liberals were arguing against back then was that Congress had not given an authorization. Well, the Supreme Court ruled in the Hamdi case that Congress had given authorization in the 2001 author, authorization for use of military force, which even Ron Paul voted for. But he didn't realize they were going to use that to justify military detention. So what they've done is they've, they've opened the door to the international laws of war being applied to the American people. And yes, 
Yes, as I said in my paper back in 2004, if you can detain somebody under the laws of war, under the laws of war, what else can you do with, with an enemy combatant? You can also just kill them on sight, which is what Obama has started to do. It's all about the laws of war. The NSA spying on the American people was defended by the Bush administration as being under his powers as commander-in-chief to surveil the battlefield. Obama now claims the power to go ahead and just kill you. It's all very consistent with what can be done to a foreign enemy in wartime. Well, that was my next point, is that if you go back to the Military Commission Act and all of that, I remember at the time covering it and having you and others on, you know, it says citizens are exempt unless the Defense Department or, or people they designate say that you're a combatant and now you're basically extrajudicially stripped of the rights of a citizen. So it's, it's all these games and they say it over and over again, but what about the overall psyop last week and this week of saying it doesn't affect citizens even when Lindsey Graham and even when John McCain admitted it did we see that classic military psyop of trying to make the debate about whether it did this or not instead of debating is this a good idea well that's section uh, 1032 and there have been some folks even a, an article in the American Thinker that misread that 1032 requires military custody, but then for certain people, but then exempts from that requirement U.S. citizens or lawful residents for actions that are committed here. What that means is that the president must detain someone in military custody if they meet the criteria, except unless they're U.S. citizens or lawful residents. And in that case, he's under Section 1031, he has discretion. So all it really means is that he must detain some people, but when it comes to U.S. citizens and lawful residents, he can do what he wants. He can, he can try them by, by a, a jury trial for criminal, for criminal statutes under federal law, or he can put them in military custody. Uh, it does not say that, that the military trial provisions and the military detention provisions cannot apply to American citizens. It just says that he has discretion. And this is something that, the, that I believe it was the other, other senator you mentioned earlier who got it right. He said, look, all it does is lead up to the president. And the president likes that. He is not opposing this detention policy. He's simply opposing that one section. Ten. And then, by the way, all the presidents do. I mean, you're a you know, Yale constitutional award-winning lawyer. You know more about this than I do. But watching and studying it, the president then just lets the secretary of defense and then his designates do whatever you want. So people think, oh, well, this is special things just with the president. But the way I've right. seen this done in the past, the president then just designates it and creates his own military Praetorian secret police like the SS. Well, that's correct. In this, this actual uh, document itself calls for the establishment by the Depart Secretary of Defense, uh, May, in, 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 in consultation with Secretary of State and the Director of National Intelligence. You know, they, they set up their own system for determinations, and it won't be done by, by the President. Like under Bush, uh, Padilla's, Padilla's and, and, and Hamdi, both of them U.S. citizens, were, were designated uh, unlawful combatants by flunkies in the DOD, lower bureaucrats, not by President Bush himself. So you're correct. Incredible. Uh, now, what about this new bill? Have you seen this new one? I've got an article here, authorizing torture. Uh, now they're not even denying that it's torture. They're just saying, yes, we're going to torture. And it goes on to say the same Senate wish uh, today uh, move forward with a bill uh, allowing indefinite detention of American citizens on American soil for suspicion of being terrorist is now considering a bill to repeal the prohibitions against torture. The ACLU and another 30 organizations sent a letter to the Senate asking them to oppose an effort in Congress that threatens to revive the use of torture and other inhumane interrogation techniques. I mean, the Nazis, Stuart, as you know, didn't put stuff on paper. I mean, as a constitutional lawyer, as a veteran, but this is a guy searching history, why is it a bad idea to have torture? That's like asking, why is it wrong for Mr. Sandusky to rape children? I mean, you know, well, why is it wrong to put children in barbecue pits? But, I mean, why is it wrong to have a government that secretly arrests people and has dungeons and tortures people? You know, why is it wrong to put babies in deep fryers? Well, I mean, the founders, first of all, as a matter of constitutional law, the founders put the Bill of Rights in place and also the treason clause of Article 3 in particular to stop torture, to stop compelled confessions. That's how they got a compelled confession out of you in the Star Chamber in English history. They tortured you, forced you to confess, and then they executed you for treason against the king. The founders knew that history. They also experienced, you go read the Declaration of Independence, it talks there very clearly about the cause of taking up arms. One of them is denial of 
jury trial. One of them is the um, application of a jurisdiction foreign to their constitution against them. Another one is, which, which would be military tribunal. Another one is the, the, the application of military law to the colonists, whisking them away overseas. This Quartering of troops, thing. and they've already militarized our police. I mean, that's military right there. That's an end run around posse comitatus. I mean, the, the whole Bill of Rights, the, the Fourth, Fifth, Sixth Amendments, and, and the Eighth Amendment also, um, in particular, were designed to stop exactly this. Arbitrary detention, denial of jury trial, being whisked away into military custody, the military being made superior to the civilian power, the denial of, of the right to jury trial, which is mandated in Article Three of the Treason Clause that tells you very plainly what must be done with an American who wages war against his own country or aids the enemy. And Scalia got this right in his dissent in Hamdi. He said, look, the treason clause is plain. It's right there. It tells you you must try them in, in a court, in a, in a civilian court, in front of a jury of their peers in a public trial. And if they're Not a traitor, they're, they're going to get executed. But, but I mean, here's what's so amazing. Right. And that's and, the whole point. That's, that's the whole point of that, is they knew that secret evidence and torture would be used. That's why they insisted on a, a civilian trial in an open court with two witnesses to the overt act. Absolutely. Not one you know, informant or something lying. Now we have secret informant testimony. I mean, and now you can't face your accusers. How much of our constitutional system has been completely overthrown? I mean, as a layman looking at this, it looks about like 80% has pretty much just been blown to bits. Well, if they pass this bill, it'll be pretty much our enabling act. I mean, the only, th only thing left would be for John McCain to do an amendment that says, or any other action that's considered terrorism by the U.S. government. But really, you should see this as, as a declaration of war against the American people. That's how we should see it. We need to stop this right now. If we don't, Alex, I do believe that there'll be no recourse except another revolution. Otherwise, we are going to be lost. We will be put in the same position as the founding fathers were in 1775. They have been, they have taken off the mask and told us, I mean, they could do it to your kids. There's no age limitation in this bill. They could take your children children away and take them to Guantanamo and hold them for, for the duration of the war on terrorism on the mere accusation that they are terrorists. I know it sounds ridiculous, but they could do it. So why do you want to wait until it gets done to you, the American people? They're telling you already what they're going to do. They're declaring war on you. John McCain is a traitor. Every single one of them that votes for this, Lindsey Graham are all traitors. They committed treason against you. And I don't use that term lightly. But they are declaring war and waging war on the American people. And so as far as I'm concerned, if they pass this bill, it's put up or shut up time for the American people. Either you're going to fight another revolution or you're going to be slaves. Well, Stuart, at the beginning of the show tonight, I, 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 I said to the viewers, I said, I'm never somebody that shoots my mouth off about violence. I want to fix things peacefully. I'm into the info war. And I've studied history. Uh, it's, it's engrossing. I'm obsessed with it. And unfortunately, I had to tell viewers at the beginning that people do need to go ahead and prepare for defense because this is a declaration of war against the American people. They've set Northcom up. They've set up the National Police Force. They've set up the secret police. They've tell us torture's good. They say they'll arrest us for no reason and throw away the key. I mean, these are Hitlerian, Stalinistic declarations. And we would be fools to not listen to them. And, 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 and now they're taking people's private bank accounts. I, I mean, it is as if the gates of tyranny have been opened against us. And, 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 and it's always darkest before the dawn. I hope this gets turned back. But if there was ever any doubt about the drive, the mindset, the, the makeup of Lindsey Graham uh, and, 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 and people like him and, and John McCain, I mean, these are modern day tyrants. I mean, these people really are would-be Kim Jong-ils. And I know you've never talked like this uh, on my show. I've probably interviewed you 20 times. I've seen hundreds of speeches you've given. Uh, and uh, you're just being honest, Stuart. You know, it's not fun as a broadcaster and a talk show host to get up here on air, and because uh, I know the danger. And, but, you, but the truth, veritas, is paramount. And uh, they provocateur. They want violence. We don't want it. But if they do start disappearing people and stuff, my God, we're just entering an area of the ball game where they want to force a confrontation. I mean, clearly, Stuart, you see, just like the arrogant Redcoats, you know, did 230 something years ago, they're trying to push a confrontation right now. 
Well, but there, there comes a point, though, as Patrick Henry said, that where you have to realize that the fight's going to come. And if, and if they're telling us what they're going to do, I, I don't see them giving up this power or relenting unless they're forced to. And, and yes, there's a, there's a thin chance we could do it through politics. But look at the vote yesterday on the Udall Amendment, which Rand Paul joined. Um, in, in co-sponsorship of, it was defeated. So the majority of the senators and almost every single Republican except for Rand Paul and a bunch of the Democrats also, a bipartisan assault, the majority of them want this. They think it's totally fine to hold American citizens indefinitely without a trial or try them at military tribunal and execute them. They think that's great. And so, you know, so far, politics has failed us. And really, I think that once you have this, this act in place and they start to use it, then, you, then you're talking about, you know, having crossed the Rubicon and now you're, like, you're maybe like 1774. You're on the eve of conflict. That's where you are. And the only real question then is a matter of time and how it's going to go and how do you maintain the moral high ground, which our founding fathers did. And I do urge people to take a very close look at our history. They were pushed again and again and again until they finally had to fight back because they came for their weapons. And that's what's going to happen in this country. If they pass this bill, the next step will be they put all the, all the pieces in, in the, of the puzzle in place and then they need an excuse or a pretext. If you talked about many times, then there'll be a domestic terrorist attack or something like that will happen and they'll start rounding up people. When they get to that point and it starts to happen, you will have no recourse but to fight. Same place that Solzhenitsyn was in when he talked about how they burned in the camps later lamenting the fact that they waited and they did not fight back. That's where we will be. But we're not Russia. We're not Germany. We're not in, in, in Nazi Germany. Good little Germans. There is a sizable per, a portion of the population of this country who are not going to take it and who are going to fight back. Well, Stuart, you're right. And uh, the globalists have miscalculated. I mean, when you see Corzon making 40 to 1 bets with, his, with people's private bank accounts, and this is the main economic advisor to Obama, these are mentally ill people. They've got actuaries, they've got think tanks, they've got s political scientists telling them what moves to make, but they're not going to be able to carry this out. E e there is at least 30% of the population that when they see others overrun and arrested and then tortured and trotted out all drugged up, could be you, could be me, who are going to go off. And I, I want to tell the military and police, the globalists are going to sit offshore and watch you get chewed up in a fight with the American people. Uh, it's very important that police and military really make a decision now which side they're going to be on. Because this is, a decision, right. this is a decision for all the marbles, their family, their country, everything. The tyrants we have running things, I've studied the different ty tyrannies, is so absolutely wicked and hateful. I mean, it's not some boss hog corruption, Stuart. Uh, your comments on that. No, you're correct. And that is their Achilles heel. And that's why I founded Oath Keepers. The military, you're right. Choose now whom you shall serve. Either you are, I'm talking to the military out there especially, either you are a son of the republic and you will defend the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, or you are a traitor to your country and you are nothing but a, but a lowly dog, an obedient dog to the powers that be. Choose now whom you shall serve. Well, you know, that's what's so disgusting about this, Stuart. It's not fun being right. It's not fun that we've been proven correct. Uh, it's very sick. And, and, and the pace it's moving is so quick and so naked now. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, I mean, look at Fast and Furious. They got caught shipping tens of thousands of guns into Mexico. So they had CBS release. Oh, we allowed them to be sold at a few gun shops. Of course, it came out. It was drugs being shipped in the U.S. by the ATF, FBI, DEA, Border Patrol, Coast Guard, you name it, and several other federal agencies. It was tens of thousands of guns, not just shipped out of the country, but to Honduras, Mexico, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Florida, to gangs that were killing other gangs. And you find out our government literally is a mafia at, at the top of drug dealing criminals. And you find out they really did stage Oklahoma City. You find out they really did do all. I mean, people need to understand. I mean, we're not just sitting here demonizing people we don't like. I don't have words, Stuart, for my study to describe just how nasty these people are. And, and, and I don't think people understand. It's like, like you said, Solzhenitsyn said, what would have happened if we'd have met the secret police with hatchets and pokers, you know, when they came to grab people? Uh, you know, half the city wouldn't have been taken to their camps. The, the organs of the machine would have ground to a halt in days. Uh, I mean, and when you realize the very same mega banks that funded Lenin and Stalin 
are funding this now. They plan to do all of what they did in the Soviet Union here. They lick their lips and talk about how they plan to exterminate at least 20% of this country. They plan to take our kids and our wives and blow their heads off after they rape them. These are murdering absolute people worse than the Bolsheviks. And I don't say that for effect. These are wanton, bloodthirsty scum, and they have our flag on their shoulders. How do you deal with that? Well, I think the important thing to always go back to is our Constitution and Bill of Rights. I mean, that's that's the truth. That's the uh, Declaration of Independence, and that's why they don't teach that in schools. And so I encourage, especially those in the military right now, um, and also law enforcement, go back and read the original documents. Read the causes for taking up arms in your forefathers' revolution. You will see it right there in the Declaration of Independence. It's the same exact thing. It nothing changes. Human nature does not change. It's the same will to power. It's the same. Uh, totalitarian mindset that they faced and they fought. Look at what they wrote in the Bill of Rights to stop this from ever happening again. Look at what McCain and Lieberman and the rest of them want to do, and they want you to be the tool of oppression over your own people. See the truth, and when you see the truth and you understand that your children, your wives, your family are all in danger also, then you need to do what's right. And what's right is, is you must at least refuse, stand down and refuse to be a tool of oppression. But I'll tell you what, if they start using military force against the United States and against the American people domestically, you will have to make an even tougher choice. You will have to fight on the side of the people. You will have to make that choice, just like George Washington did, just like the militia in 1775, who was the military of the United States at the time. They decided, they made the choice, they must fight back against the crown, against the national government. They had no choice. You will have the same obligation. Now, Ron Paul has talked about another possibility. Things may completely financially collapse before this happens, and that might take the steam out of these people. Well, you know, it's interesting. The very first conversation I had with Congressman Paul when I, when I was going to apply for a job with him, he, he was, you know, kind of worn down. This is back in, in 1998. And he said, I, you know, I'm afraid that it's going to take an economic collapse to wake the American people up. And then I expressed the concern that, well, it could lead to more oppression, like the Great Depression did. And so there is that. It, it's, a, it's an open window. Like you said before, it's a, it's a two-way window of opportunity for very you know, horrible, evil things to happen and a destruction of our Constitution and destruction of freedom, or it's an open window for us to resurrect it and restore the Republic. So when this window opens, and it will, the economic collapse is coming, we need to be ready to make sure that we can push it through towards liberty. We better be prepared for that. But if we're, if we're weak, if we're not morally prepared, spiritually prepared, and, and physically prepared for it, for what's coming, then there's a chance that they could win. Describe so Ron why. Paul back in 1998. I mean, I've been interviewing him since 1996, but I don't know him obviously as well as you did working in his office for years. Now, you describe worn down. I mean, this is a guy that does work 16 to 18 hours a day, totally dedicated. I mean, describe for people out there what he's like behind the scenes. He's the same behind the scenes as he is on camera. He's, that's him. You know, he's... He's got endurance. Like, I, I can't believe that he's, I mean, I, I, I'm burnt out now. I'm burnt out. Even after just two years of doing Oath Keepers, I'm fried. I'm burnt out. And I can't believe he's been going on, going like this for decades. It's amazing. So he just has the endurance of, uh, I think it's because it's his calling. He understands that this is his place in history. And he, I think he believes and has faith that in the end, liberty will triumph. Otherwise, I don't know how he could keep going on. We had people on the staff there who quit and were just so despondent what they saw back in 98. This is, you know, way before the war on terror or any of this other stuff. But they were already so despondent about the, you know, the, the incredible tide of statism and, and, and government power that they were going up against and corruption. Yeah, it makes me up. cry, Stuart. I got to tell you, I think about what this country is going to go through. It's, it's going to be horrible. Well, we have the... We have the potential, we still have the potential for it to be like 1989 in Eastern Germany when the wall fell. If there's enough of an awakening in the people, you can reach that tipping point. Well, that's what finally happened there was the military refused to shoot the people trying to get out. That's right. And, and they all stood down all at once. And without their support, the Communist Party was done. The Stasi were powerless. They all ran and, and hid. And, and tore off their, their emblems and tried to hide in the crowds. There's a famous photo when my mom was over in Germany a few years ago, she brought me back, uh, and it was a famous photo of a family running through barbed wire, and well, the little kid is caught on it, 
and there's, there's a series of them, and he t takes the little kid and gives it to the parents. And of course, they took that guy and tortured him and killed him. But that's a famous photo of the East German soldier. The people have gotten across, and he goes ahead and gives them the toddler, which seems like just a normal human act, but that was his death sentence. He should have just gone right. ahead and climbed on through and gone with him. And, and we have a really good interview on our website with Gunter Spenz, an oathkeeper who was an East German lieutenant colonel back then. And he describes how back in 68, during the Prague Spring, there were some officers who refused orders to, file on, on, to fire on the crowds. They were disappeared. Um, so that was too soon. But by 1989, so many East Germans were sick of communism, including in the military, that that tipping point was reached. And that's what we got to do. We hopefully will have enough time to hit that tipping point of 80%, 85%, 90% of the population who is sick and tired of the illegitimate governments over us, and they will, it'll be like a paper tiger. But collapse. see, with the communists in East Germany, they had one party. Here they've got two that are really the same party, and they have this fake fight. That's how they keep us fighting with each other. How, how right. do you break through that? Well, I think once again, you realize like this, like this bill here, it's a, a, whenever you hear the word bipartisan, you should realize what that means is it's a bipartisan assault on the Bill of Rights. You know, so they're both doing the same thing. This is, Levin is sponsoring this bill. McCain really, you know, helped him write it. But Levin, the Democrats, sponsoring this bill. So you have both Democrats and Republicans. And then you had Harry Reid to, yesterday move for cloture, which is to, to limit the debate on the bill, which will stifle um, a filibuster. They know that Rand Paul is going to filibuster. So that's the thing, is when you look back at the bailouts, that was overwhelmingly bipartisan. Look at the, the, um, the um, domestic, what's, what's called the, um, the violent radicalization Homegrown Terrorism Prevention Act that was sponsored by Harmon, a Democrat. That was also bipartisan. The Military Commissions Act, same way. Patriot Act, same way. That's how you break through that, is to realize that whenever they decimate the Constitution, it's done through bipartisanship. So that's why, like you said, it's one puppet master with two hands, a left hand and a right hand. They're both being run by the same people. And look, and look, follow the money. Where's the money go? International bankers. That's who's running our government. And My like God, said, they're openly announcing world government now run by mega banks that took over through fraudulent paper and the people that engage in the fraud are the ones being the media says are the are the heroes because they're owned by the same crooks and then when we're proven right we don't get patted on the back it's like how horrible you know uh, it's just incredible and, you know earlier when you were talking about all of this happening and, and everything i literally sort of have tears come out of my eyes uh, not even a sobbing way an involuntary because that's your brain giving you endorphins so it's not too painful. I mean, that's literally what it is because I realize, my God, America, the only place we've got to live is now an example of evil worldwide and we're gonna go through this. I mean, it's the realization that we're gonna have to go into the first few circles of this hell and then a lot of people we've warned are gonna get activated after it's, it's really naked and after they really experience the fruits of tyranny. Uh, but we had it so well here that people don't recognize it as the oxygen's being sucked out of the room. And, and, and just myself having the deep realization, I mean, I mean, it's almost like levels of realization. I know how real this is, but then more and more every day it hits me, it's really real. And yeah. you can, especially if you've read all the histories of this country, but others, but the founders, how they kept having debates and it kept getting more and more real and the abuse got more and more real. And, and they went and begged, please stop doing this. And, and the system said, no, we're gonna do more. And, and then it just leads to it. And I guarantee it's going to be the same way. There are probably over 100 million gun owners in this country. And if one, per, they say it's more like 150 million. If 1% actually fights back, that's a million and a half people. And uh, I mean, there's no way to beat that if it's done in an asymmetrical way. And I'm certainly not dreaming of it going there. It's just that I don't think the minions of this system realize that all their high-tech spy gear and all their black uniforms are not going to protect them from an enraged population. But again, I don't want them to be chewed up. I want them to recognize they're working for total criminals. I mean, my God, look at the mega banks that run everything, all the crimes they commit. It's a bunch of Bernie Madoffs. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, that's, that's the silver lining for us, is that the more ridiculous they get, the more the legitimacy is torn away from them, and rightfully so. And the more they're revealed for what they are, which is fraudulent, unconstitutional, unprincipled, you know, and totally the opposite of the Founding Fathers. And, and that's the whole point. If we can wake up enough police and military to that reality, then we will win, because they will not have the tools to do it.
And, and so that's, you know, that's what we have to work on. We, we can't sit on our butts, though, and, and rely on that. We've got to get ready ourselves. Like you said, you know, to be blunt, we need to prepare for the very worst. And what that will mean is asymmetrical warfare, like our founding fathers in, in, in the Southern Campaign had to fight. You know, Francis Marion and the, the Swamp Fox, the over-mountain men who defeated the loyalists at King's Mountain. All of that is an example of what will have to be done. And, and this country will be like Afghanistan. Um, I don't, not saying I'm trying to compare Americans to, to the Taliban or anything like that, but the point is, is you will see a resistance like that. You will see that kind of a hardcore resistance in, in the United States. But it is my hope and prayer that you can avoid doing that by having enough of the military and police side, simply side with what's right. Side with the Constitution, side with the Bill of Rights, side with the Declaration of Independence, and do what's right. If I hear you. If that, we win. Let me just ask you this final question. I don't know if you've seen Road to Tyranny, but I'm going to do a piece next week or something with it because it's a 10-year-old film, came out right after 9-11, and it's footage that I was sent by police and, and, and defendants and others. But I have FEMA in Kansas City saying George Washington, Thomas Jefferson are terrorists, America's bad, all this. I mean, and you think you're watching a Monty Python movie. It's not a joke, though. You know, like an absurdist police state where they say breathing is evil, you know, and the police are there agreeing with it. And then I have sent to me months later, in a, th that was in um, Kansas City, from Virginia, Abby Newman, pulled over at a checkpoint. They want to search her. She says no. They grab her out. She doesn't resist. They charge her. And then they find a Harrison Ford video uh, she, she, she'd rented, and it was Patriot Games. The word Patriot freaks them out, and, and, and they don't even know what Harrison Ford is. I mean, it's like, it's like a joke. Like, it, it'd be funny if it wasn't. Like, you're watching this from their squad car as they dig through her trunk 10 feet away with mics on. And the, guy, and the supervisor's talking to him, and they go, she's got a pocket constitution. And they're going, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. I can't believe uh, she's got this. And they're like, is this legal? And they're going, oh, I can't believe. And they're acting, I mean, for me, that, that'd be like somebody who'd been in a North Korean brainwashing camp for 20 years, mm. who'd been tortured every time they were shown a constitution. I mean, how did they find, these are like rednecks. How did they find men who are, I mean, I don't even believe this is real is what I'm saying. It's so alien that obviously they've sworn an oath to this. This is what America's based on. This is why we're supposedly special. And they are arrest some woman and a veteran, no rec criminal record at a checkpoint because she has a constitution. I mean, and, and, and they have to have a debate about, is it allowed? I, I mean, for people that haven't seen the video, it's online, it's free everywhere. People get the DVD from us, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that uh, these, these guys are under mind control. How do, they, how do they get them to this point? Well, public school. I mean, look at the Occupy people. Look at the ignorance displayed there. Um, look at the, like Adam Kokish went out and interviewed some of those people and asked them basic questions. You know, they're, look at the stuff that Jane Leno does when he goes and talks to people on the street. They don't know who we fought in World War II. They don't know why we fought in World War II. They don't know, they're just ignorant of our, of our history. And this is the product of public schools. And so, yes, you have ignorant people, both in colleges. You have ignorant people in the Tea Party who support what McCain's doing right now. They support what Bush did when he's gutting the Constitution and wiping his with it and you have cops who are ignorant also it's it's a product of public schooling that's why we have an ignorant population yeah they that's don't know what the document is they don't know it's what they swore to and so they've been taught by the adl southern property law center we got the man that it's bad they tell them constitution cop killer cop killer that's what they tell them in the drills right. people that talk about the constitution want to murder you so they're like oh we found it i mean if it's still they they're that dumb well, that ignorant. I wouldn't say they're dumb, but they're yeah, they're ignorant. You're right. They're just purely ignorant. Lacking in knowledge, right? Lacking in, and so that's the this is this is why the truth is the answer. You know, it's an antidote. One drop of truth is an antidote to a whole bucket of nonsense. And so we have to keep spreading the truth. But the question is, is will we have time to reach them all, or will we run out of time? Last thing I want to do is 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 have to fight against people who think they're doing the right thing, but are doing the, exactly the wrong thing. And that would be really just a horrible, horrible um, future for us. Well, well, they're not just tasering and beating innocent people, though. They'll, they'll get them to start thinking a little bit. When, but, 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 you know, Stuart, looking at this, as you said, humans just repeat the same thing over and over again. And now it's happening here. Uh, I mean, it just goes to show that uh, if a bunch of wild frontiers people that were in constant wars 
we're, we're, we're being bullied around by, by the Redcoats. What's going to happen to a bunch of fat, dumb, and happy people who think everything's fine? Of course crooks took over. Of course they're going to try to set up the worst tyranny possible. They've committed a lot of crimes. They've got to secure those crimes. If there's a peaceful revolution, they're all going to go to prison. That's why they want violence. That's why I think we should try to avert it at all cost. Well, uh, until the point is reached where you reach the Sultanism point, where you should have resisted and you should have fought back because you're going to wind up in a camp. And so I wouldn't say, you know, avoid it at all costs. I'd say it's the last option. Well, no, Just I'm like saying I'm saying at all costs up until defense. Sure, they're driving around in black trucks grabbing the Patriots. I mean, you know, well, obviously there's no... And here's the point I want to make to John McCain and, and the rest of them. Um, it's a two-way street. What you're doing is sticking your arm down a badger hole because when you strip away the protections of the Bill of Rights from the American people, like you said earlier, Alex, there's a 30 percent of, of the population who is awake and aware, and they're not going to wait for you to just come get them in the middle of the night. They're going to consider you, John McCain and, and Senator Levin, the rest of you, they're going to consider you to be what you consider them, a military enemy. And so you're, if you open that door and leave them no protection, no security, no, no, no knowing that they have a, a chance to face their accusers in a trial before a jury of their peers, if you strip that away, what you're really stripping away is, is the last reason they have to hold back. You, you've given them no recourse. And that's what I worry about is that more, you know, when they reach that point, it's going to open that door and we will be shoved through and have no choice. Well, the reason you're right is I've had to think about this. And at the moment, they're going around like the NKVD grabbing families and stuff. I mean, you don't have a choice. And, and then you don't just wait and, 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 and deal with the stupid steroid thugs that come, you know, it's the criminals giving the orders that have to be brought to justice. Well, that's what what's rule will be. I mean, I mean, King George was across the seas. Um, the current crop of would-be tyrants is in Washington, D.C. They're on our own soil. And so in that sense, it'll be a little bit different. Um, I don't want to say much more than that, but uh, but the point is, is that they're opening a door that it goes both ways. If they're going to treat the American people like an occupied, conquered civilian population like Iraq or Afghanistan, then the American people will treat them like occupiers. They will treat them like military foreign occupiers. They will be treated the same. Well. That is what's happening. I mean, they are saying we're occupied by NORTHCOM, we're the enemy, and as Lindsey Graham said, yes, U.S. citizens are targeted and America's a battleground. And he's this little, I don't even want to say effeminate because women aren't weak like that, this little nelly, pasty creature. But then McCain is actually a veteran and has been under the Viet Cong tyranny. I mean, to watch him, he really is a piece of trash. He is. Whatever, I mean, he's long ago abdicated in any, 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 he doesn't deserve any respect at all whatsoever for anything he did in service because he's betrayed his oath. Um, I, I, I consider him a traitor. And like I said, I don't use that term lightly. He should be tried for treason and then suffer the sentence. Well, it, it is treason to overthrow habeas corpus, <coughs> everything. I mean, this is the hallmark of a tyranny. Last question. This is the last. Is we're at 45 minutes right now. And I know you're busy and we've got, uh, some financial news coming up as well. Talking to the members and the folks that are involved with Oath Keepers, the police, the military that you talk to, what is their sense of what's going on? Um, most of them that I talk to are concerned that we are in the last breath before the, before the plunge. Um, quite a few of them are concerned that that's, that's where we are. We're on the edge of the chasm. And, and they're very concerned that we're going to cross and have no recourse but to do the same as our founding fathers. And, and they don't want to do it. They, they don't want it. But they, that's, what they, that's what they feel. I talked to them across the country, and they're just ext I mean, look at this. I mean, this is, you know, some part of Lawson are trying to say we're all conspiracy theorists. This is, this is I, I encourage everybody to go read my paper and then go look at what's happened since. I wrote that in 2004. I predicted what's happening now. It's legal. It's right there in your face in Supreme Court cases. It's right there in bills in front of Congress. You know, the president is doing it. He's executing American citizens with, with his own secret list. It's happening. And you are in exactly the same place that the founders were in 1775. That is where we are. And, and people understand that. I think, I think more and more Americans are starting to realize that. Now, the difficult question is, is then what do we do? How do we proceed? How do we stay 
moral? How do we stay in keeping with our oaths and yet also defend liberty? How do we do that when the government itself has become the enemy? And, and I think the answer has to be in state sovereignty, and, and that's what the founders did. When the government that was over them was so illegitimate that they separated from it, that it, 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 they, it, was, it was destroyed, that they destroyed the British Constitution, it was gone. They resorted back to being sovereign states, and then they erected a new government, the Articles of Confederation, and then our Constitution. So I think the same thing has to happen here. If the federal government declares war on the American people in this dang bill, we should say, okay, fine, you have destroyed the Constitution, you have destroyed the compact, we are now, again, sovereign states, we will stand on on our state sovereignty, the military should then put their loyalty to the governors of the states, not to the president. Well, by the way, they saw that four years ago in the John Warner Defense Authorization Act. It had language in it about the state governors, if they were insurrection, or the populations, and how they were going to make a 10-region governor deal, which they've now done. So the system is, is now war, is even war-gamed all this out. Then the mega banks that took over the federal government has actually war-gamed how to conquer us but again, this is by people that make 40 to 1 bets with their own, with people's private accounts. I mean, they're nuts. I mean, they're crazy like a fox, but still they're nuts. Well, they still have that Achilles heel. The weakness still is that they're relying upon U.S. servicemen and women to obey their orders. And yeah. if we can show them yeah. the proper course, which is to put their allegiance at the, I mean, if the federal government you know, destroys the Constitution completely, which, is, which, which it almost is right now, then they should put their loyalty, I don't want to say military coup, that'd be very dangerous, they should put their loyalty to the states. Just like Washington never established himself as the new king, he was subordinate and, and obedient to the revolutionary Congress. That's who he obeyed the orders of. Always the military was subservient to the civil power. The same thing will have to happen. Even in the midst of a revolution, the military must not take upon itself the power to, to govern the people. They must be subordinate to, you know, at least the civilian leadership. Amazing. The All right, Stuart Rose, OathKeeper.org. We'll be talking to you more in the future as they try to pass torture bills, secret arrest bills. We need to really get a hold of the Senate right now, though. There's been so many sobs. First, they said this wasn't in there. Then, no, oh, we've passed it, but they hadn't. They're really pulling out the stops to try to get this. And we need to contact the Senate and, and, and let them know that we're aware of their criminal activity and that uh, everybody's going to campaign against them and speak out against them uh, and more. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Alex. Wow. Folks, uh, they're moving to censor the Internet in a hundred different ways. We've covered it. We've talked about it. Uh, they're moving to try to shut down domains for no reason. Internet kill switches, all of that. Uh, because these criminals know they're in trouble. And that's what's so dangerous about them, is that they've committed so many crimes and, and, and given energy companies a half billion bucks that they knew they never used and guns to Mexico and everything that think of what they'll do next. I'll tell you, it's going to be stage terror blamed on uh, domestic groups. So that's why I say never offensive violence, because they need that, they use that to look like the victim as an excuse to attack the public. Um, I almost go with the Gandhi view at the first phases that imagine if they blow up and burn down some more churches, how that'll, how that'll boomerang against them. But I understand it's immoral to let them do that. Uh, it's just that from a psychological warfare position using the truth, I see about taking more of their abuse as really discrediting them. And next time I talk to Stuart, we'll talk about that. I mean, it's a, it's a wider debate. Or is that a cowardly delusion? Well, it's not a cowardly delusion, or we wouldn't even be here talking about this. We'd be here serving the evil and, and uh, cuddling up to it. It's just that once the genie's out of the bottle, uh, these globalists are going to sit off shore while the American people kill each other. I want to try to avert violence as long as we can, and I, and, and, and I want to avert the globalist staging events uh, like they've done to try to demonize those of us that are awake to their criminal activity. So we've got to be, what is it, wise as serpents and peaceful as doves. But, uh, and again, like you said with the Solzhenitsyn situation, you cannot let them drag you and your family off to the FEMA camp when you've done nothing wrong. Uh, I mean, they're trying to train you now to pepper spray in the face and tear you to death and beat you in the head for no reason. And they now say that even if the, if the baton bounces off your head, that's a form of assault. I'm serious. You're not allowed to cover your face when they're kicking you. That's assault. I mean, it's becoming sick. And, uh, you know, these cops and people will be judged by having their future destroyed by the globalist. But still, that's not enough. We'd rather wake them up. And we'll try. We'll try.
Uh, but uh, this this corruption is just is, is surpassing all reason. We're going to come back with another interview in this extended edition of InfoWars Nightly News, PrisonPlanet.tv. You are living history right now, ladies and gentlemen. Don't say you weren't warned.